I like uh, uh, to to bring, uh, first of all, is entertain. It's always make the reader uh, have a good time reading a comics, no? But using the, the read of, of the, how do you read the, the page? Like a funny part of the reading, not just only saying, oh, look how good uh, this guy draw Captain America or how nice is the new costume. So, you know, the experience of read, be part of that fun. Welcome to the Comics Cube, everyone. I am excited because today uh, we are talking to Javier Rodriguez. How Hello. Are <laughs> Hello. Hello, how are you? Hi, uh, thanks for having me. I hope I said your name right, right? Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, because you know, it's in English, usually uh, the J, Javier, is hard to, to say. So, perfect. Javier? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's um, fine. Yeah, because it's also a Filipino name, so I just pronounce it the same way I would pronounce a Filipino name. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, uh, why do you love comics? Like, what was the first comic you remember loving and reading? Mm, probably the first. Probably was uh, uh, Mickey Mouse comics or a Disney license. You know, license because here in Spain in the eighties, uh, the the Disney comics that came from Italy, you know, that yeah. uh, are are were very popular those days, and probably Spanish authors like uh, Francisco Ibáñez or Basket and authors that came from the. Bruguera School. Uh, Bruguera was a famous editorial that has, a, I can tell you, maybe 50 years publishing here constantly and was like a magazine for kids. Uh, I'm trying to imagine in English, maybe like some of the mad magazines, but more mm. close to the French or Belgian tradition, you know, like uh, Franking or or yeah. Uderzo and Gossini and you know Asterix and stuff like this. And some, love um, Asterix. I, yeah, and I think in the when I was like six six years old, when I learned to read, I start with the superheroes and uh, the typical Spider Man, Hulk. The Hulk, we call the La Masa here in Spain, and Daredevil, we call it Dan Defensor. <laughs> names, funny names like that. But yeah, I start reading very young, and, and that's because my dad has a huge collection of comics. My dad really? loved, yeah, yeah. My dad loved the comics, and but my dad was more uh, for Moebius, Richard Corbin. You know, Warren magazines, like the very 70s, of course. Yeah. Um, a lot of uh, spirit from Will Eisner. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We have a lot of comics at my home, and I read a lot, very young. Who was your favorite? Oof. Hard to say, because, you know, for uh, it's like I live in... Those days I live in the walls because I have my comics and my favorites when I was young was the typical from Miller, Walter Simonson, John Byrne, the, the, the highlights of the 80s, 70s and 80s. Um, in other hand, I have my dad's comics. Um, I have Will Eisner, Corbin again, um, uh, Alex Nino, this typical, you know, a lot of artists and um, I can choose honestly uh, but I don't know I don't know I I love all of them I love comics with passion since I was very young uh, who what which artist uh was your biggest influence when you were were you when you were drawing it's different I think it's I think about Sartis 
more concerned with the um, with the line draw. Uh, Frank Miller is an example of this. You know, the oh, Walter Simonson was a huge influence for me when I was young. Eisner is another one. Frank Robbins, I love mm -hmm. Frank Robbins when I was a child. Mm, but a lot of artists. Um, from, for example, uh, here we have the Fleetway uh, staff from England, uh, like Jude Dread, uh, you know, uh, yeah. McMahon, Brian Boland, a lot of them, a lot of them. And of course, uh, for friends, uh, Moebius is a huge yeah. influence, I guess. But thinking about the way that I understand the comics, the way I put the panels and the page, probably my biggest influence are uh, Frank Miller, Walter Simonson, and John Byrne. That's the okay. artist that I'm looking for always when I okay. was a kid. So Frank Miller, you loved Daredevil even back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, okay. yeah. It was, you know, uh, those days I, I here in Spain, I think the, that 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 Daredevil from from Miller was published like in 80, 1983, 1984. I was like twelve years old, and I I bought it uh, I bought it uh, monthly, you know. So I follow the from Miller Daredevil month. Every month I pick that comic and was like an epiphany. It's like, a, wow, wow, I can't believe it. <laughs> this is, this is so, yeah. It's, so you, you were following Daredevil monthly back then? Yeah, yeah. Back then, those days uh, we have it like in, with a Spider-Man in the, in the back pages of the Spider-Man magazine. We have uh, one magazine of, for a Spider-Man that have the uh, Amazing Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, and Peter Parker is a Spider-Man. Um, as complements, we have uh, Daredevil. What a what a package! Three Spider-Man, yeah, yeah. Frank <laughs> yeah. Miller's Daredevil. Yeah, yeah, and, and I remember that this was uh, be be weekly, yes, to every month. So yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um, what how did you start uh making comics mm -hmm. i can't remember probably the most uh, the, i have one copy of one of them that i did uh, a small magazines you know with with the uh, staples uh, yeah 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 and uh, like paper. photocopies, yeah. yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, the, probably the most old is uh, when I was six years old, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Um, professionally, you started working in Spanish comics, right? In a Spanish comics, in a, a Spanish magazine called El Vibora. Mm -hmm. I, I start, uh, you know, I came from the 90s I mean, when I was, uh, I started to published I was in the 90s and those days all was do it yourself you know like a like the punk scene like the music scene is all do it yourself all the time I, we uh, start doing or all, all uh, our own magazines you know uh, we print we go to the printer we are looking for art, so I started doing self-publishing. My my first magazines was all self-publishing, but that started in 1996 in El Vibora magazine that was an um, important magazine here in Spain. In this magazine, I have the first works of Daniel Close, uh, Jaime Hernandez, Hernandez Bros, uh, Robert Crumb, you know, all the stuff that you imagine from Fanta Graphics, from Bernard Quarterly, I think, but more important, Raw Magazine from yeah. Art Spiegelman. You know, from Spiegelman. Uh, so all independent stuff was in this magazine. Um, and I start there, there doing my, my own series and with my scripts, my draws, yeah, yeah. and you spend there like 
six, seven years, I guess, no, maybe six years doing three, four series, um, and then start doing graphic novels. And that was Wake Up. That was Wake Up. Okay, so at this point, I will share my screen and I will uh, okay. go through a slideshow of your some works from your career. So let's uh, let's talk about Wake Up uh, first. Let okay. me just share my screen. So this one uh, was in originally was conceived as a series. Uh, a comic book serial for the El Vibora magazine that we are talking about, but uh, Glenat Spain, that it was a division of Glenat France, the, the big editorial from France, uh, tried to invest in Spanish artists, in Spanish comic book uh, comic artists, in, and start to publish in like this kind of no graphic novels because the format is more close to the French album, you know, more mm -hmm. more close to the it's a bigger mm -hmm. theme, yeah, maybe 40, 16 pages. So I have a proposal to do my first graphic novel with um, and and did it. So this is my first work and probably the first that I feel that. I could call it the first because all my stuff from the 90s or before is like very amateur. I think this is the first one that I consider professional, you know, but a lot of people tell me that I fool because uh, uh, or if I lost my mind because I have hundreds of pages before, that, before published before that, before that one. But, you know, for me, this one is the first that I call my first professional comic. What is Wake Up about? Those days, uh, uh, 20 years ago, uh, I moved to Barcelona. Right now, I am in the north of Spain. Um, here in Spain, you know that the topicals are the topicals and the typicals are related with song, with paella, with people dancing, and all the stuff. But uh, we have different climates here. In here in the north, we are more close to the Atlantic. I'm more close to the England weather, no? Yeah. So when I moved to Barcelona, to me, it was completely different. Barcelona is a Mediterranean city, uh, sunny, uh, no, totally different. So through this character, the main character, I tried to do, I tried to do some, like a tale, telling my experiences, my experience uh, just when I arrived to a new city, a new life. I was young, you know, 26 years old, I guess, 27 years old. So uh, I had had a, a, a lot. I meet a lot of bars, uh, yeah. nightlife. So that's that is this comic about, about relationships. You know, it's like a yeah. so opera. You did everything in this comic, right? From the writing, yeah, to yeah. The all mm -hmm. the way down to the coloring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and precisely this comic uh, was the reason because I became a colorist later. Because uh, Marcos Martin, uh, my friend, uh, <laughs> saw this comic and said, you know what? Uh, I'm looking for something different for Bad Girl GR1. Yeah. Um, why don't we try and ask to my editor about if you maybe could put the colors on Bad Girl Year One? And that's the reason because that, because I start to to color comics. That's cool. So mm -hmm. um, with with that, you colored Bad Girl Year One, and you were also coloring. Um, then you ended up coloring uh, Mark Wade's uh, run on Daredevil, which had artists like Paolo Rivera. Um, mm -hmm. and not yeah. just Somni yet, and Marcos, and yeah. Marcos, Marcos, yeah, Marcos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Marcos is a uh, very, very important in my career. Marcos uh, is, is one of my best friends. Um, when he break into the comics in the States, he helped me a lot to you know jump there because. 
first of all, I have the problem with the language. I, I, I learned English very, very late when I was very old. So to me, this is the my feels uh, my feels barrier to to start a, a career in in the states, but Marcos helped me a lot with this issue. Um, I guess that he gave me a lot of contacts, you know, with editors, with editorials. Um, cool. I start yeah the, the, those days I was only have in mind uh, do colors because to me uh, for my style for the way I did the comics I never thought that I have any chance to publish in the United States you know in the superhero market because I I I knew the characters I knew the stories because I, I spent all my life all my life reading comics. But my inquietus, my my thoughts in yeah. comics are focused in in stuff like this, like they wake up. But I start coloring comics, um, and when Marcos moved to Marvel, he yeah. I, I I I went with with him to there to Marvel. Um, I realized that I can draw that comics, you know, for first time in my life, and then start working in Daredevil. And that's your first issue, Daredevil number twenty-eight. Twenty-eight, yeah, uh, exactly. as the artist. Um, so, mm -hmm. how did you uh, start drawing in Daredevil? Hmm. I started drawing because uh, Stephen Walker the editor uh, of that devil those days uh, a very important editor in in my career and i think in general is a great editor um yeah steven walker has like put a lot of really great artists and yeah. together right like i'm thinking yeah. of you david aha on hawkeye yeah so. yeah yeah that was was like magic those days you know because I think the, the he had um, something special, you know. The, it's like an intu intuition that to see uh, what artists could work in this title on in this one, or it's weird. I don't know, but uh, I think that the story was more or less more or less like this. Uh, Marcos uh, was having a conversation with the thief. Um, Say, so, do you know that Javier uh, knows how to draw, draw comics? And, and Steve said, no, no, I, I didn't read it. I think that he is only a colorist, right? And I said, no, 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 here in Spain is a great artist that Marcos was my friend. And, and he, he- He is also is, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, that's just only uh, mention the, the drawing and stuff. Um, he said, "Oh, so Steve uh, sent me a mail um, and asked me for do uh, some pages for the Spider Man." And I say, "Okay, come on, let's do it." Um, I do uh, now awful uh, uh, sample pages. Yeah, you know because. You have in your head how how a page of the superhero page should be, and always looks more easy. But there is a some case, some path to follow to do a nice superhero page. Have, yeah, you, it's it's hard to explain, but it's, it's like when you, when you are. Yeah, when you are an artist that came from graphic novels or more serious stuff, it's like a, a superhero, it's something easy, it's just put hours there uh, doing lines and doing people like this. And no, it's more complicated because there is a lot of stuff that is not easy if you know, are involved in, for example, how the characters move, how you know a lot of things so especially spider-man right the especially spider-man Spider yeah 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 absolutely yeah in fact i remember drawing those pages and say come on it's something is not working here but anyway i send the pages and time pass any news i still uh, working with with steve as colorist in the devil and so many titles 
And those days I was working in, in exclusivity for Marvel. So I have a lot of detail, titles every month to, to put colors on it. And like uh, almost a year or maybe 10, 10 months before uh, Steve sent me a mail saying, hey, uh, remember the pages? Uh, do you want to try and, and, and do some sp pages for Spider-Man, for Web of Spider-Man? And I said, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I start drawing and coloring at the same time. Yeah. And it's crazy because I could do my, I, got, I, got, I, got, I draw, so I, got, I was drawing, but my page rate as artist is like this, you know, at the, in the bottom of the, and my page rate as colorist was like this. So why I can't. Like is it because you because were... I have the, I re, think about it. I have like a ten years career of my almost of eight years career coloring. So I have a big page rate. My big page rate never is big, but <laughs> my page rate is like this um, uh, for coloring and just yes, for the art like this. So I can uh, I ask for coloring myself, but they tell me no, no, sorry, but your color is <laughs> your Javier Rodriguez the color is, is too much for the Javier the color is the artist so I start uh, drawing with uh, well I, re I remember that the first one the web of Spider-Man had my colors but then when I jump to another titles I can color it myself so what's awful what's awful because I did awful comics because those days I was drawing at the same time, coloring at the same time, and it was impossible. So when I started working in Daredevil, um, Steve asked me to do some numbers, uh, so a couple of issues, I remember it's 28 and, and 29, 29, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I asked to say, I. <laughs> Uh, asked to Steve to men. I want once I end with my contract, uh, I want to draw and I put the colors away because I can do all uh, at the same time. And he told me, Yeah, 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 perfectly. No problem. We, I hope your page rate as artist went up. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little, <laughs> not too much, but I'm, at least uh, right now I can put my own colors so like um, here in the devil because you know uh, when I think the page I think all at the same time. Yeah, and coloring is the, the coloring for the narrative or the way you tell the story have a huge influence. You know, the, the color is very important. And you think about it right now in in comics, the color is part of the drawing. Yeah. Because the way the people handle the rendering and, and the way the people uh, put the colors to, to, to display the shapes is, is drawing in fact. You know, because you're you are drawing with the color too. It's, the world art is just one thing to me. So, so yeah, you know, yeah, no, so no, you... no. I say I say that to me it's important to do my own colors because it's like a part of the the whole process. Yeah. So you mentioned that you think about the page as a whole, and I think this is a good example of That's that. The because yeah, yeah. Um, so this was a Mark Wade script um, and well, one, what does it feel like working with Mark Wade is one of your earliest <laughs> uh, pencil jobs? Yeah, I was so lucky because since the first comic, I, I always have a nice uh, writers, I guess. Uh, Mark Wade is one of the tops, is perfectly is uh, awesome. I learned a lot of Mark working in Under Devil. And yeah. even uh, when I was only the colorist, because you know, I have the scripts um, um, and I have the chance to, to say, to see how, 
uh, Paolo or Marcos handle the the scripts from Mark yeah. and transforming comic book pages. So it's like a, for me it was my university. That was I learned a lot from from Mark and and the scripts from Mark are nice, very very nice scripts. So this page, this sequence, I love it so much because I um, this is where this is where I was reading it. And then I went, who drew this? And then I went, <laughs> yeah, I really. went to the credits <laughs> because I think it's so clever because, you know, you have one scene here and then obviously this is not next door, but you mm -hmm. have young Matt just turning around. So it looks like one continuous motion, right? And mm -hmm. then the old man, and then just no you know no backgrounds here so he's not even in a panel it's just mm -hmm. so clever how did you come up with this arrangement well i always i always when i when the script arrived to me any script the first uh, i'm looking for is to put uh, in one hand the actions you know the verbs and in another hand the descriptions the adjectives of the of the script. This is the way that, that how I work. So I I say okay, I have this page, and there are five, four highlights, four verbs, four actions, and in other hand, I, I have the description, the backgrounds, the colors, uh, the, that elements. So I put in, I put the white page in front of me and I say, okay, this element here, this element here, you know, you know, like a partiture, like when you do music I, and I say the actions are this, 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 and to understand the environment, the background, the, I need this, this, and this. And now that, you know, at this moment, I'm not thinking in panels, just the information that I need for that page, in, you know? So I put all these elements there, think about the, about them. And at this moment is when the panels come up yeah. and tell you, ah, you need a panel here to explain that. You need a panel here, you need another one here. Oh, the, this is a full body shot. This is just a close up, uh, whatever you need, no? but. That's the way I work. So here, to me, I, was important. For example, I here uh, the script was very short. It's just this is the typical Daredevil origin scene. Anything else? Uh, uh, little Matt is hiding from the, the bullies. Bullet. Yeah. Um, anything else? The rest is the typical uh, Daredevil scene. So I think that uh, was could be nice. Will be nice. Uh, nice. Put uh, Matt alone. Um, transmit to the reader that the the guy is alone. Uh, have uh, he don't have anybody to to help. So that's the the reason because I put the white uh, no panel. Uh, scene there in the middle is like uh, when you are thinking blank no the the, the little guy is like um you brace it uh, alone so no backgrounds anything else and suddenly i put uh, the information for the reader uh, the um, what's the name in english the cross crosswalk and yeah. the the, the old man. traffic light don't work we don't we need elements there no yeah and later you don't need any element uh, more than the blind man because the blind man is very very important in the third of the stories you know my... that's the way that you know <laughs> yeah sorry because i try to explain the best i can but it's perfect uh you know my favorite thing is that your first issue of daredevil you drew his origin because yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. everyone has to draw Daredevil's origin at one point. 
Yeah, yeah, I thought the same. Eh? You know, when I read the script, I say, "Wow, this is so fucking yes. cool." I have, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have the because um, I have my fan there, and and I really love that devil. The main problem to me with that devil was the suite, the costume, because um, really, yeah, because you know. Mm, I have one in mind, but I'm not sure. It's hard to to draw because the blacks. You uh, must decide if you have blacks or not to the to the suit, and it's uh, a hard decision. You know, if you look to, for all the artists that handle their devil, is the weight of the black and the rendering of the muscles the difference between artists and. and it's a different it's a difficult decision to take you know almost to Be, me <laughs> because it's not real black it's all shadow and you just have to figure it's all, out that's right and yeah. it's like a he soul has shadows here in the forehead yeah. uh, or, or the muscles need the rendering you know so for example chris yeah make it so clean so elegant I was like, wow. And I came from the familiar tradition with the uh, hard shapes, uh, very yeah. black renderings. And, and so how did you decide how much black to put in? Did you just talk to Marcos and Paolo or? I talk with Marcos a lot because well, I chat with Marcos every week. We, we chat a lot about comics. Um, and both have the same conclusion and how difficult it is to draw <laughs> the costume because you must to decide uh, but uh, at right. the end i i think that i follow the crypt sign some the vision because it was great it was very great uh, i think chris knocked it out of the bark because he's that they really is so great uh, don't you think it's, you guys, that, that was such a great run. It had you, Chris Somni, Marcos Martin, Paulo Rivera, Marco Cicchetto. It's just an amazing run. You know what? We have a very, very good um, connection. The team connection, all people are like uh, working together to put the title every month. Uh, you know, uh, all people are very involved with the uh, with this book. It was amazing. It was amazing. I learned. I learned a lot. A lot. Yeah. So believe me, it was um, so good. Before we move on to the next one, I'll just say that I bought every issue of that run, um, I, and then my my friends were wondering why I never talk about it, and I'm like, because I don't know what to say. It's good every month. <laughs> like that's all I have to say about it. It's good every month. No, no, it was it was a very good book because you know uh, I think that when the team are connected, uh, the editors, the writers, all the artists uh, uh, have in the same directions, you feel it. You 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 see that in the comic. You know, in the final result, you said, okay, there is a armory here, you know, in yeah. how this thing is working in the in the title. And that's happened with that level, I get think. Do you miss Stephen Wacker as an editor? Yeah, yeah, always. Yeah, yeah. You he was he he is because <laughs> he's still alive, but uh, as editor, he was brilliant, brilliant editor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was sad when he left comics. I was like, oh, it's yeah, yeah. too bad. Um, yeah. The next one, I believe this is your first ongoing series, right? Spider-Woman. Mm, probably. Yes, yes. Yeah. With, yes, uh, and, yes and, and I start in issue five yeah. of the previous volume. <laughs> of the previous volume with uh, Dennis mm -hmm. Hopeless slash Hallow. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the experience on Spider Woman like? You know, it was fun because I remember perfectly. I was drawing a, a three uses miniseries about Hot Goblin, fun and other stuff, 
for Nick Lowe, that was the editor that replaced Stephen Walker in Spider Office. And suddenly they bring uh, this collection, Spider Woman, and I love Spider Woman. It was one of my favorite characters when I was a child, and I have. Was it because of the cartoon? No, 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 okay. here, no, no, here, no, no. The cartoon thing in Spain, if maybe it came in the 90s, you know, okay. you know, when I was a child, the, the most popular cartoon superhero related here was uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man ah, okay. <laughs> was uh, yeah. my generation was Spider-Man and the TV the, the when real person TV series with Hulk, you know, look with Love for Reno. You yeah. remember that one? Yeah. That's the only two TV shows here. Think about it. We only, when I was child, we only have two channels mm. of t- TV. So it was very limited. No, no, it was for because the comics. Because yeah, I love the comics when I was a child. I, I love the Spider Woman as character. Um, one of my favorite com- comics when I was a child was, uh, when I was young, was the Avengers Annual. Do we remember that one with Michael Golden? Yeah. That with Captain Marvel, bueno, Miss Marvel those days, and, and Spider-Woman, and Rogue. Was, um, that, that comic blew my mind. It was one of the comics that most I read when I was young. So I remember uh, looking the first issue of the spider woman and i say oh, come on i can draw this title this uh, uh, this is perfect for me they, they are bringing back spider woman and i should be the artist and like uh i don't know two weeks after that uh, i had the mail from nick asked me for for be part of the of the book and I say yes yes absolutely and he told me well but the costume will be different the the original uh, he told me that he don't like the original too much but I love the original and I say okay no problem let's do it but you know we don't use her powers will be most rounded more more detective basset and okay i can handle it and you know dull it. And I say no no it, anyway i can draw i can draw a spider woman and i like to draw it so it yeah. was amazing amazing so <laughs> i love this title i love this title too and the thing that i'm saddest about is that you you didn't draw from the beginning mm. like i wish you like i wish you did because that was spider verse <laughs> Yeah, you know the problem those days was the the events. The, we have events all the time. Um, was difficult to to work with that because you know I remember having uh, chats with um, with De- with Dennis talking about the well, the stories, no, or the or the plot. Of, for the series and um, mm. we change constantly because when you have three four issues suddenly there is an event or a film or whatever and we must change all the time constantly and what's the problem with this book but it, for me it's very 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 important in my career what what uh, uh what are your thoughts on i know you love the original costume but did you also like this costume for spider woman mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like a lot. In, you know what? Um, right now, thinking about it, I I like that we have this change because makes this run special. No, is is the run with the different costume, with the motherhood uh, yeah. stuff. Um, you know, for me, it's important. When you arrive to a title, it's better to do something new than repeat the same again and again. So right now is perfect. You know, it's, we, we are, 
at some point we bring new things to uh, all character and this is always wood I, I think I love this run I love this particular story uh, because we we the readers spent so much time trying to figure out who the dad was and then you guys basically tricked us because it didn't matter <laughs> so and I'm like Zero. that's brilliant I love it <laughs> For us, it was important to, you know, build characters that feels like real people. I, I try to explain, but because I don't remember talking about it, especially, you know, saying uh, we shall do that like this, like that, but it's like the workflows. Yeah. Suddenly we have a character like the Porco Pim. There's a, this a B Lester character, nothing yeah. important. And when Dennis put in issue five, I remember they say, oh, uh, thinking about how hard it could be to draw this character in so many issues because <laughs> I thought that it's just for one, you know? So I say, oh, this costume this character is like a pain in the ass you know the drawing this every month but suddenly this character grows and grows and grows and i remember uh, that dennis told me this i want to introduce this guy as a a, a character um, a real character with a team and other stuff and say let's do it because it's it's fantastic this naturally how the characters take the place in the story you know is very nice very nice right so let's go to a double page spread uh speaking of the porcupine there is his uh yeah his costume, famous costume. yeah uh what a sequence like yeah i so one i'm gonna ask you how you came up with this but two i mm -hmm. think the thing that strikes me is that you have one panel border and that's mm -hmm. it. But this is an important panel border, right? Because it lets mm -hmm. us know that this is where we should start. Mm -hmm. So what can you explain your uh, how yeah. your artist's mind works? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, as I tell you before, the, this the way that, that I work is always uh, having a visualizing the the wall page you know the and sometimes i change a lot the script you know i never change a dialogue but i change a lot of the panels the, the the distributions all the time i ask always to the to my writers and editors uh, if there is any problem but they know how they work i think right now and they give me a lot of freedom to to do that and especially with dennis i don't have any problem and i remember that when i see that i, I thought well, there is nothing special here is just uh, she is living the the, the instance and nothing special and i was looking for do something interesting and for entertainment because for in my point of view we are entertainers with mm. or you know our job is to entertain people with or with all comics so that's the reason because i was looking for solutions like that to make something interesting and for you the readers have say oh come on this is nice i, I enjoy it so with in this case it's like I say before, the, the actions was the most important. And the most complicated to me was the especially the panel inside the room because this one. Yeah, because yeah. in the script uh, says uh, he sees hiding uh, in the porcupine costume, but I, I had to figure out how he slid the costume and you know, cling to the to the roof uh, without being seen for for the bad guy. In this case, is one of the I don't remember. Ah, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Was the Corpukin Porcupin wife? In fact, yeah. when, <laughs> when when this is a little spoiler. 
So it's okay. It came out a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> there is no spoiler anymore. So uh, yeah, uh, I tried to figure out. Um, you know, I don't remember if we have the gas station like that. And uh, and remember that the, this probably was two pages in fact in the script yeah. and this particular page have have dialogues have balloons you know with dialogues but <laughs> here is the funny part <laughs> uh, for some reason when they put in the in the in design or whatever the program that they use for the composition and send it to print, they lose the balance, the dialogue, you know? It doesn't need them. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, that's the point. And suddenly, uh, oh no, but what's happening here? And the values, you can imagine, it's like, oh, I see the, the old town there, or oh, let's move to the car. I need to be quiet, it's something like that. But suddenly it works even further, I think, without any dialogue here. It works perfectly. Uh, my so, favorite one is this one where she's just, because you didn't need to draw her stretching. Yeah, but, yeah. That's, a, that's what was my, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, yeah. When, you, when you do stuff like this, you are um, making a dialogue with the reader. Mm, you know, it's yeah. like a... Mm, is the way that you uh, turn the, uh, there is something magical when you when you pick a comic and start reading at the beginning you you only see pictures there yeah but there is a moment that you uh, make a click and suddenly there, you are inside of the comic you are not thinking about oh look at this picture or look at this one that, that made that makes the it's like saying that the comics is working the, the the work is well done because you as a reader don't need to think that you are reading a comic yeah it's tra it's hard to explain you know but it's like it's something magical because for me is the reason because i love comics even more than illustration or the because the comics are like a magic object when you draw it and send it to the printer and then arrive to you readers. You are in Philippines and you're at your home, for example, and you're reading and connecting with me. And I am not present there explaining to you that look at this, look at this. It's your own. It's, you are feeling the, you know, the spaces that I let the, for you fill it yes. with your information, your own experience as a reader, as in general, I, and that is magical. I, I love that. I love yes, that. I agree. The magic is that I know, even though you never say it, I That's know right. that I have to start from this gas station sign and I go down here, over here, up here, and then over here, and then back down here. And I just That's know to do that because of what you did. That's, that's right. Um, to me, that's magical. And this space in special is an example of that because we uh, forget uh, the, all the dialogues, all the balloons. Um, and I remember <laughs> that there is a lot of them. So think Not about necessary. it. <laughs> There's, if, it, if it had been there, I, I don't think it would have made it less special, but it does remind me of Frank King, by the way. <laughs> yeah, really? Um, you know, Frank King used to do those Sunday strips were with just one big background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember. I, I, um, you know, I have the posters. Oh, there is. Um, when I was young, there is like a encyclopedia here that called the encyclopedia. And it's like uh, four volumes of history of the comics. Um, nice. What's an history of the comics of the the world planet? No, is. Uh, uh, Japanese, American, European, and with Yushu, Yushu, Yushu Wong, we uh, the collection have there's like um, 
a small magazine that you pack together, you know, and you make the four volumes. Um, the first one have a, as a gift a Frank King poster of Gasoline Halley. So I have when I was young, when I thinking six, uh, no, maybe this one was nine, ten years old. I have in my room uh, the Frank the Gasoline Halley posters. That's so cool. So cool. And I think that that's the reason because I like a lot of this kind of displays, you know, because it's, it's um, the stuff that I use a lot, you know, put the scenario and move the, the figures are around. And I think that came from that, that old poster that I have in my room. Um, probably. <laughs> Can you tell me about getting involved with the history of the Marvel Universe? Mm -hmm. The story of the Marvel Universe was um, was where because uh, I was looking. I think that this was after Doctor Doctor Strange and Sorcerer Supreme, probably. And I was thinking how to do uh, what to do next. And um, Tom Brevo. Uh, sent me a mail, asked me for do that. Uh, he, she, he told me, mm -hmm. uh, do you want to draw the history of the Marvel Universe? And I say, what? <laughs> because uh, well, the history of the Marvel Universe, what, what is this? So that, that's, that is this, uh, is the history of the Marvel Universe, the whole history of the Marvel Universe. I say, wow. And I said yes because I love the must the Marvel universe and is to me was like a challenge to draw all the characters, you know. Yeah. And I thought about with I Mark thought, Wade. Yeah, but you know what? Mark arrived uh, uh, after this was um, at the beginning. I have only the, the I, I didn't know what was the was we will we, we, the writer for the for the story. So that's so cool. I say yes, yeah, yeah. I say yes, knowing not with the with any writer involved at this moment, but I like the project. That's so uh, cool. You were you were on it before Mark Wade. Yeah, that's yeah, so yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. I think maybe three, four months, uh, but yeah, was that was is a, um, it's it's a rundown of the whole history of the Marvel universe from the beginning mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. the end. Uh, it, I have it actually in the treasury sized edition, which looks mm -hmm. amazing. Um, mm -hmm. And the thing that struck me about it was that every page you really are looking at the big composition. But in a page like this, where you're talking about some of the bigger events from the 80s, you know, uh, the death of Elektra, uh, mm -hmm. the introduction of Monica Rambo as Captain Marvel, the introduction of J James Rhodes as, uh, as Iron Man, and mm -hmm. Better Ray Bill. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at your layout here, from mm -hmm. which you posted on Twitter versus the final page, and it's very close. The thing mm -hmm. that I really am amazed by is I feel that in the hands of other artists, this wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I, I know, sure. But, you know, this, this page is a good example that history of the Marvel Universe means to, means to me because, you know, the, here there is my DNA. Like, I start reading comics with, with this comic, the, especially you know here are the the 80s of this is my my inspiration up to draw comics and this resume how i feel when i have to draw the complete history of the marvel universe one of the main things that i thought when i start to draw in this was that the, this is the story of the marvel universe not the marvel comics yeah you know there is not about art styles. This is not about magazines that I love it, but it's not that. It's, the, it's the, to tell the story. 
you know that, that story that is made about about to put pieces together from a lot, a lot of writers, of artists that try to put together stuff that you can put together, in fact, but it's the imagination of the previous uh, writers that makes that word, how to say it. Mm. For example, there is, a, there is a lot of stuff in the Fantastic Four from Lee and Kirby. Yeah. A lot of ideas, but there is a lot of things that don't make sense any at all. And then in the 70s, there is a lot of artists that say, okay, these mechanisms or this uh, super William have the reasons to do that because that and, and had uh, complexity to the story, to something silly. You know, it makes sense to you that you think about it. It's like, um, it, the other day I read a script from Dan Slot that resumed this perfectly because he, he brings something from the old Fantastic Four and has a solution in the in a new vision that changed the story completely. But it's like a having it's like a John Byrne, for example, yeah. in with the Fantastic Four in the 80s. At the end, is the it's a reboot. Of the Jack Kirby and Stanley, but trying to, you know, adapt that 60s uh, crazy world to the 80s. So at the end of the day, uh, I have to do uh, an history of the Marvel Universe that put together a lot of stories, a lot of them with no sense at all, and a lot of them very, very great, the majority. But to me, what's important that all of them have the same level, you know, because as a reader, as a fan of the Marvel Universe, I have my preference. And I, of course. But as an artist of the Marvel Universe, a story of the Marvel Universe, I should to put all of them at the same level. It doesn't matter if I like more or less, you yeah. know? And that's, to me, there was the more difficult, but... To, to, the more fun too to do this comic, this particular comic. And that's the reason because I try to put the best in any of the pages of the project. And there is part of the comic that, for example, my favorite Marvel comic ever is Bora Again. And Bora Again it does, doesn't sell any page here in the history of the Marvel Universe. Why? Maybe because it's. Um, or a game is like a small history. Then, yeah. then if you think about it, it's bigger because it's a it's a, a bigger history for Matt Murdock, but not relevant in the story of the Marvel Universe, in the cosmic Marvel Universe. It's the best Daredevil story like ever at that point, right? But in 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 the context of everything else, it's just that's it. It's a small, <laughs> it's very yeah, small. Yeah. It's very small because it's a it's a inner history of Matt Murdock. And yeah, you know, it's it's a curious uh, and examples that, like that. You have a lot of them along the history of the Marvel Universe. And if you think about it, uh, this game is uh, is a record from the editors. So there is a lot of editors' point of view in what events. So I'll be here and there. Um, suddenly, uh, Mark arrives, and when Mark Wade starts to write in and send me the pages, all made sense to me because at the beginning it's like, uh, wow, this is huge. Uh, I can handle all this stuff together. But once Mark starts to work and there is a research team to send us a reference, I read and read a lot of stuff because sometimes I will, I, I, I want to figure out something different. For example, I remember during the Ralph Richards and Sue Storm wedding, um, and they sent me the, the famous uh, Alice Ross yeah. uh, picture from Marvels. And I say, okay, this is phenomenal this Alex Ross top-notch uh, 
what is the point that me recreating this? So I figure out how could, how could be the the ring stuff and what happened outside the charge, you know, with the and and then I realized that I say ah, I don't draw the fantastic car yet. So this is a good uh, moment to draw the fantastic car. And I realized that Sue and um, Red Richards uh, living um, with, uh, from the wedding with the fantastic car will be nice. That's the war I, I did all the book. I, I, one, the of, way. one of the reasons I said I didn't think this would work was because you have these four characters, Electra, Monica, uh, Rhodey, and Sif, and you're forming the illusion of one big image, right? But mm -hmm. one, uh, they're not all built the same. So, you know, you get here to Rhodey and the arm is so much bigger. And then mm -hmm. two, the other thing to me was Electra and Monica don't even have the same pose. Mm -hmm. Like they're not even at the same angle. So I don't no, know no. how you made that work. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but because uh, as I told you, I thought uh, uh, I always think the page like uh, uh, a whole thing, uh, uh, you know. And I said that, and I say, okay, the four situations are very, very different. Are anything in common here? No, so. Yeah. What can I do to put the, all of this uh, together and I say, okay, a big figure, um, big figure with that, with what? And I say, okay, I have Electra. I don't want to show the moment that uh, both side kill Electra because we've seen you it know, a million times. <laughs> yeah, and I remember when I read it, I have a problem with. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't have any problem with anything, no. But, but when when I draw. The way to solve the violence, I prefer to solve the consequence than the okay. that the moment. I'm, I'm preserve that moment of violence just when the story really needs it. You know, when you need to solve the like in the original story, for example, that you need to see that you need yeah. to hate uh, both sides because you know is something awful that was happened there. So you need that. But here in the history of the Marvel Universe, you, you don't need that scene like that. So and I thought, oh, OK, uh, Electra dying, that is pretty successful too. But then I think Monica Rambeau is just awesome. The costume, you know? Uh, and then I have a uh, rose. Um, the Iron Man, and I say, wow, it's impossible because I don't have the head. So I realize, okay, we have the the room with the all Iron Man armors there, and put Rose in the background, and where I can use the. And for Billy Ryan, uh, Billy Beta Ray, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm saying in Spanish, Billy, uh, Billy Beta Ray, I realize that I don't have seeds in any sort of the history of the Marvel Universe, I say, oh, almost we can draw Sif there. And it's such a go. clever solution because yeah, by yeah. this point, you don't have better Ray Bill's face. So you have to show <laughs> him in the background instead. I have to ask, yeah. uh, just out of curiosity, I noticed you changed the Iron Man mask in the background. Mm -hmm. Is that an artistic decision or an editorial decision? Now nah, this is all artistic. You know, okay. I was very, very lucky with this project because at some point they trust a lot of me. And to be honest, the change, changes here was just three, four times, mm. six times, maybe, but always like, uh, well, like this, uh, put this costume or put the, another one, but this is not what's the case and honestly i don't remember because i i like the first one <laughs> i like the the helmet with the points there i don't remember because i changed that one 
Mark says this project was so big that you guys almost missed Black Black Widow. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that <laughs> because I was drawing. I I don't remember if it was like issue four. This, this happens a lot of time because I, I remember, you know, I was in the project uh, a lot of hours every day. So at this moment, at some point, I had a lot of characters present. And I remember asking, uh, what's happening with Black Widow? And I say, oh, come on, I forget Black <laughs> Widow. We saw put Black Widow in some point. And something similar happened with Hulk, with the Hulk, because I remember that saying, okay, we we have the Captain America going to this, to this one, but we don't have the Hulk. And <laughs> say, oh, oh, come on, well, okay, we hilarious. put it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens, yeah, sometimes. It's okay. Um, it's, a, it's so, you know, it's so big. It's a, there, there is a lot of chances, small chances like, a, okay, these men don't have gloves in this, uh, you know, or Tigra don't have tail uh, <laughs> yet or stuff like this. Wow. Uh, just the attention to detail. That's amazing. Mm. Um, so this is not an artistic question. So this is just going to mm. be a very quick question. What did you think of the Clone Saga? <laughs> I, I will be... Uh, <laughs> I am honest here with you. I didn't read the Clone Saga when oh. I was young, because oh, really? those those days, yeah, I those days I was the moment that I quit of superhero comics monthly. So in the nineties, I only read the comics that I, I like the art or have something special. And the Clone Saga when I was young don't i remember that i bought the john romita stuff stuff that i remember that was the uh, story with ben Rayley, pretty nice yeah. but not the complete saga no 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 okay. i quit the the to the, but for this project i read the clone saga so to draw this the whole page, thing I'd, more or less the yeah. whole thing yeah 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 i pick whoa, 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 the uh, the main books you know yeah yeah um a lot of them in in diagonal you know reading like yeah, yeah. but i read it all to to do this page because as i told you to me it was important that put at the same level all the events you know yeah. Even the worst events that you know one likes or whatever, put at the same level. Um, it's nice because at the end you find the real history, the like the you know the the spine yeah. of the that line of history that you said there is a good history here. Um, they lose here or here because maybe. Uh, the monthly stuff or the events or whatever those days, but there is something interesting here, and this is the stuff that I take to put later in in pages like this one. Yeah, I saw this page and I was like, because I liked the Clone Saga when it started when I was younger. I was twelve, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. but even then, I I could see when it was it stopped being, you know good <laughs> but then i um but then i saw this page and i was like whoa the clone saga got one page i yeah does has marvel stopped disowning it now <laughs> yeah yeah it's a you know and if you realize there is a lot of the smile details that even for example why mary jane is yeah with the hand yeah. here in this area it's very subtle you know because it's I took elements of the story and I tried to put all of them here in one page. Yeah. Is this your only time drawing Daredevil in this horrible 90s costume? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For example, I quit Daredevil when I, I remember uh, seeing the, this costume and I say, wow, this is not my Daredevil. So I let yeah. it. 
why do you think a lot of a lot of people a lot of fans like you know it gets the book gets to the point where they don't like it but then they just keep reading it and complaining like why do you think they do that you know i was there i remember when i was child and picked a lot of comics monthly but but it's true that i realized that the i follow i think that i always follow the the artist and yeah. sometimes the writer but if the if the art, I don't like the art. To me, it's pretty hard to read uh, a me comics that, that, you know, and I have a lot of friends that read a lot of comics that they tell me, no, no, read this one. It doesn't matter the art because the story is pretty good. And I say, to me, it's like a claim for Amante because it's, I need that the art visually. Me too. Me I understand. Too. Like, mm -hmm. do you, what do you think about when people say things like, uh, you know, uh, I like the writing and I don't care about the art because I'm like, the art is what carries the writing. Yeah, to me, the uh, the comic is the final product. Is the yeah. is the, you you know that this is a, a comic the the uh, with the staples with the, the paper and. Oh, uh, right now the, when you read it in the but it is the wall thing and the person that have the weight of that is the artist you know because it's a is the person that put all together yes. and to me it's very important and i i understand the when editors and writers tell uh uh, that, uh it's important the routine yeah yeah all is important but I be in the, I was uh, in the all positions. I I was in the position of the editor. I know how, uh, you know, because I start editing comics in this business. Uh, I know how to write a comics. I know I know all the process. Even I know how the print work because it was my. I, I used to do that. I'm, I'm a former graphic designer and I know how work the C A M aka the offset all the stuff and let me tell you that the artist is the most important because it's the it's the guy that put all together all the knowledge together you know to it's hard to explain but it, it's true though it's a, true. you know because yeah there is a lot of decision i i i teach comics years ago um i used to explain how important is how you tell the story to the people and sometimes it's more important than the story it's like uh you know like uh, comedians because sometimes it's not the joke or uh, it's the way that you tell the joke to me that's very important so it's it's true i feel like um if dennis hopeless had written spider woman and mm -hmm. you know somebody else drew it it's a completely different story, even if he writes the exact same scripts. Mm -hmm. oh, see, see. Oh, absolutely. So this one, uh, this mm -hmm. is Mark Wade's favorite page from that book. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that's amazing about it is how did you come up with the idea to just put everything in his boot? Mm. <sighs> this... Uh... <laughs> This starts because uh, I want to put uh, the Sandman and the Vulture there because uh, in the script, you just only have the Spider-Man origin. And thinking about what I have uh, next, I realized that we don't have so many Spider-Man billions. So I thought, uh, I need to put uh, some Steve Dicko creations there because to me it was very important to, to show that. Um, the first was this, this that bring it all together because the script says uh, the origin of Spider-Man and Spider-Man in action. So I have a Spider-Man in, Spider in action. I have all the elements there and I say, okay, and when I can put the... Where, where I can put the Spider-Man origin. 
and I see the page and I say, okay, the boot <laughs> is the place right there. But why not use the the boot to to show that? And that's all. It's simple. <laughs> Do and you I say realize... I need that space? You know, yes. I see the page and I say yeah, I need that space, but I need this bigger Spider Man in in action because it's the first time that we have Spider Man in action. So okay, let's put it all together. Um, I put the colors and I, you know, close my eyes very early and I say, okay, I see the figure and, and when I open the eyes, I read the panels. So that works. <laughs> That's all. So it works in so many ways because like everybody knows Spider-Man's origin. <laughs> you can just follow this, but also it's interesting how you don't need to see Dr. Octopus. You just need to see his arms. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. Um, that's all, something that I have the with the off panel. I have a special interest to work a lot with that because it's the reason because um, tell you before, it, it's nice when you put elements that makes work the reader's mind. You know, when you are reader, you are feeling a lot of the spaces that, that I let for you. So I realized that I need to put Dr. Octopus here, but we don't need to, to show him. It's just only the arms, you know, to put the action and to help the compositions of the page. Are these guys your favorite Spider-Man villains? All Dico creations are my favorites. Okay. Yeah, the, to me, the, the first, the the issue from one to 34, I guess, is the 54, 56? It's, thir it's 37. And 57, then, okay. Yeah, 30, 37. 30, 37. And then this is... Don Romita took over. Yeah. This, um, is, this is perfection. It's, to me, it's, I, I like, I like, I like a lot. The these are because... three of the first four villains. Mm, the the yeah. first one is the chameleon, I think. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, which brings us to this page, which you mm. did for Marvel number 1000. Uh, mm. So what an issue, what a great issue that was. Everybody did just a one page of, of art mm. um, and it all took place in a different year. Uh, you worked with Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, who, if I'm not mistaken, are the writers of Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How did it feel yeah. uh, working with them? Like, did they ask to work with you or? No, I, I, in this case, it, it came from Tom Brewer again. Uh, Tom asked me to do a page for the special. And I say, of, of, of course, I, I want to be involved in Marvel 1000, obviously. Um, no, they sent me the script and I remember when I read it, I say, wow, come on. There is a lot of info to put in one page, <laughs> you know, because it's like a one, three, four, you know, 11 panels, maybe. Yeah. And I say, wow, it's 11. what to handle? Yeah. So I realized that I need a spider, a Spider-Man salt, because it's the first moment that we see Spider-Man um how to do it fun and i and i thought oh, okay let's do that the put them perpendicular to the wall and use the you know the cable of the telephone like a meme or motif to make the wall composition of the page you, you solve the I, problem I, there too you don't need to show him in the first one because this is an extension of this panel that's a <laughs> That's really clever. Yeah, that's a way to have a bit more space there, you know, and, and to have the to help the origin origin original panel to to have more background to you know situation because there is all very small or very packet. There is a lot of test. Um, it was hard to deal with this page in particular because you know is but 
I like, I like that. I like when you have a page that is, is not easy and you need to put solutions all the time because yeah. that might work. Yeah, but yeah. You that... know, I always think about uh, the page, not the, not the, not the characters. I, I think always uh, like a big visual, that, you know? Yeah. That's what I was saying is uh, you, you have a habit, even from the first Daredevil one that I showed earlier, you have a habit of taking multiple moments and making it one moment. And yeah. I think that's just, I, like, I don't know how you come up with that. It's, it's amazing. It's great. Because uh, I feel like that's an it's, Eisner influence. Yeah, probably, probably. I like um, uh, to... To bring, uh, but first of all, is entertain. It's always make the reader uh, have a good time reading a comics, no? But using the the read uh, of the, how do you read the, the page? Like a funny part of the reading, not just only saying, oh, look how good uh, this guy draw Captain America or how nice is the new costume. So, you know the experience of read be part of that fun yeah i don't know if this it makes makes it sense, makes sense you know but but to me it's like a very important the how this put all together my neck my last question is uh, what is next for javier rodriguez well we end with defenders right now with all a win that was amazing um, right now, I am working in an special and um, one sort issue that I can tell anything right now, and a new mini series for next year. But I can say anything <laughs> right now because I think that the past like a uh, two, three, four months before they say nothing about it, I think. Everybody just follow Javier on uh, Twitter and Facebook so that you can get updates. Thank you. Um, again, thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much because you, as, <laughs> as you can see, my English is very limited, my spoken English, but... We talked for speak. an hour and a half. I wouldn't say your yeah. English is limited. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank you so you. much, Javier. Thank you. Bye-bye.